and welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave and this is episode 244 and today's date is December 20th, 2013. And the title of this episode is The Insiders Are Now Preparing for the Economic Collapse. Are you? And what do we know? Well, let's take a look at the stock market. We see the Dow. We see the S&P. We see the NASDAQ are all hitting all-time new highs. They're creeping up there. They're pushing them up. What else do we see? We see gold being pushed down. It was smacked down yesterday. It rose a little bit today, but it's being suppressed. And why are they doing this? Well, because they need to acquire gold. These insiders are trying to hoard the gold right now because they understand this stock market, the dollar, the housing, the treasury market, the student loan market is going to collapse. And this is why you're seeing this. They need to keep the illusion up that gold is a bad investment. They want people to sell gold. They want people to look at the stock markets and say, oh, we're in a recovery. Unemployment's down 7%. Stock market's way up. Everything looks fantastic. But then again, uh, you have Ford, you have Caterpillar, you have all these other companies coming out saying they're adjusting their their outlook um, moving into 2014. Caterpillar has their sales down two times in a row, uh, between 15, uh, 12 and 15 percent, and this is worldwide. Ford said, oh, we're looking at Europe. They're in a recession slash depression. Uh, the United States is in, in an economic slowdown. Um, the other auto manufacturers, they're trying to beef up their sales by giving subprime loans uh, to people with bad uh, I mean, loans to subprime credit borrowers, and they're trying to do everything and anything to maintain the status quo. So they're channel stuffing the dealer lots with cars, and they have anywhere between 76 and 80 days worth of cars on their lots. The same thing is happening in retail. Uh, they are cha- they are stuffing uh, and and increasing their inventory so much in the hopes that they're going to sell all of this. And this is a, a huge illusion of what is really going on. And right now, Europe is being devastated right now with debt, with high unemployment, with uh, people who are starving, with austerity. They cannot get out of this because it is impossible. They do not have the revenue from the working force to pay for all this debt. And right now, S&P decided, you know what? We need to cut the EU's top rating, and this is what they did. Um, the EU's 28 member states, uh, their long-term credit rating, uh, they dropped it by one step. I believe it probably should be down three or four steps here because we have to look back to 2007, 2008. Uh, these credit rating agencies were giving the subprime security uh, AAA ratings at the time. And they were completely toxic. I mean, Goldman Sachs knew this because uh, they were hedging their bet against it because they knew it was crap. Because they were giving loans out to people who should never had loans. And they all knew this. And I don't know if you remember this, but Goldman um, this year said they were bearish on gold. And the next day, gold dropped like 100 points or so. And they told everyone to sell And what they did is when everyone sold at the higher price, they waited for the gold to drop and they purchased it all up and they became the third largest holder of gold. And this is how they operate. They do nothing for the people. They do everything for themselves, just like the Fed, just like the government. And what else are we seeing? Well, we are seeing that 40% of consumers will be spending less this Christmas. Now, why is that? Well, The reason is because people do not have work. They're either underemployed or they're completely out of work. And what we're seeing is that uh, Bankrate.com did a uh, a survey saying that only one in seven said that that they intend to spend more than they did last year. 40% say they actually intend to spend less this year because they do not have the disposable income. So... All this inventory that's sitting in the retail stores is not going to be purchased. All these cars sitting on the lots are not going to be purchased. And we're going to have a major disaster. That is what is going to happen. And this goes on to say 
the tendency to spend less rather than more wasn't just confined to one or two pockets of the population. It was evident in every age and every income group that we looked at. Now, I wonder if they looked at the people who are unemployed, the people who, you know, because that's, what is that, uh, a, a couple million people here. I wonder if they surveyed them. How about the people that are going to lose their unemployment come December 28th? I wonder if they spoke to 1.3 million people there. Now, the White House was out there, and they're like, wow, we're surprised that the nation's civilian unemployment rate you know, dropped from 7.6% in June to 7% in November. And this really surprised the White House. They, they, and the only solution they have of why this happened, it wasn't the manipulated numbers. It wasn't because the Fed controlled the market. This is what they came up with, and this is what they're spinning this as. I think the Affordable Care Act has been helping the economy and will continue to help the economy. I think it has contributed to the slowdown in the overall growth of health costs, which is good for the competitiveness of American business. Well, let me just say this. The health insurance companies cannot be competitive when everybody is forced to apply from, for health insurance. When the health insurance companies wrote this bill, they already took the rates and they already knew what the rates should be and they pumped them up and brought up the deductibles and there is no one is competitive at this point. Plus, Home Depot, Forever 21, and many other businesses are hmm, getting rid of full-time people, putting people on part-time, lowering their hours. So how did this help with unemployment? Well, let's think again. Also, the companies right now saying they're not going to hire more people because of Obamacare. So all of this is a bunch of BS. They didn't count all the people who fell off the unemployment, uh, who fell off um, looking for a job. They don't count those people anymore. And those people, the 1.3 million people who are on unemployment right now, and when they do fall off in December because they uh, will see if they extend the unemployment, and if they don't, they will fall off and the unemployment rate just drops. So really, all this information, this uh, propaganda coming out from the White House is to make everyone believe that the economy has recovered. It was because of the Affordable uh, Care Act, and they are trying to make everyone believe that everything is fine. Now, we have to go and look even further of what is going on. We see that um, that Q, uh, that Q um, the GDP was revised again, and uh, the, Bur the Bureau of Economic Analysis surprised everyone by announcing a final uh, Q3 GDP growth at 4.1% compared to 3.6% in the first revision and 2.8% originally. Um, they revised this um, because why? Well, it was a $15 billion revised increase in annualized spending. 60% was for health care. And another 27% was due to purchases of gasoline. And we also have to remember they went all the way back to 1929 and completely changed the calculation of how GDP is calculated. They now throw in research and development and they've calculated everything forward. And if you notice, they're continually manipulating the numbers, recalculating everything to make it look like things are recovering, that everything is fine. And if that is truly the case, the Fed would no longer need to taper at all. And we will see if that really happens. Because right now they're doing this, whatever they, people are calling it, taper light. I want to see that what happens once January hits, what excuse they're going to come up with, why they can't taper. And that most likely is going to be some type of an event. Now, as I said in my other reports, what governments do in the end game is they go after 
money and they don't care where they find it because they need the taxes they need the revenue to sustain the debt because the budget they've come up with actually allows them to spend trillions and trillions of dollars they are still borrowing trillions and trillions of dollars and this is why the debt level continually rises I mean it, it doesn't you don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure out that gee I wonder why all this debt is increasing 17 trillion and if you look at the US uh, debt clock dot org uh, the debt just continually rises it never slows down it just keeps going and by the time the president is done with his term, you know, the debt is going to be like $20 trillion at this point. But right now, what they are doing with the law of FACTA is they are going after everyone around the world that has a, um, who is a U.S. citizen, might not be working in the United States, might be working in another country, or might have moved funds into an account um, outside of the United States and now they are going after them and right now the United States has signed bilateral agreements with six additional jurisdictions to implement the information reporting and withholding tax provisions commonly known as the foreign account tax compliance with these most recent agreements the United States has signed 18 FACTA intergovernmental agreements and is engaged in related discussions with many other jurisdictions because they need as much money as they can to keep the revenue coming in to maintain the amount of borrowing they are doing because as it stands right now they don't have enough because they need to borrow and the revenue coming on is not enough to sustain what they want to do here and over the past week, Malta, the Netherlands, the islands of Bermuda, and three UK crown dependencies, Jersey, and uh, the Isle of Man, and Guern uh, Guernsey, um, all signed up. Some of the banks in Switzerland have uh, signed up, many of the big ones. And we can see what they are doing. They want people to tell on their neighbors who has money, and they will be going after these people. And this is why they're doing it. Now... We understand that gold was smacked down. Now, what would be the reason for this? Well, we understand that countries and other financial institutions, even the Fed, need to acquire gold. JP is quietly scrambling to refill its gold vault. And what they're doing right now, JP Morgan has been accumulating an impressive amount of gold. And what is more curious it has been precisely in increments of 64,300 ounces of eligible gold on a daily basis. Two months ago, JPM had only 181,000 ounces of gold, and yet, just today, it announced that JP Morgan eligible vault gold rose by almost the amount, increasing by 125,000 to 1.2 million ounces of gold. So here we are. We see what they're doing. They are accumulating as much as they possibly can because they realize what is happening China is buying it like there's no tomorrow because there is no tomorrow for the US dollar Russia is doing the same and right now um, the Chinese again do not want our dollar anymore they are putting a hold on purchasing Treasury bonds Russia is doing the same they don't see it benefiting China and right now what is happening is that they are buying gold and they are buying it from London and it was a report that the vaults today are virtually empty empty in London and they held about 26 million ounces and what this report was saying this video on Bloomberg that most of this gold went to Chinese hmm now what is China doing right now well the China International Payment System SIPS will be established in Shanghai in 2014 and will help settle the yuan payments worldwide 2014 is a critical year as the structure for uh, SIPS would be finalized during this time this is very big right now here because they are looking to do um, what the United States does for the US dollar and the Chinese go on and um, Wu went on to explain that New York uses a clearing system called the clearinghouse interbank payment system 
uh, otherwise known as um, CHIPS, to settle global transactions denominated in the U.S. dollar. It handles 95% of international dollar payments, which has allowed New York to become an international financial center. Well, the Chinese are doing the same thing for the yuan, because to become the reserve currency, they need to... Um, have the same type of system as the United States and they are doing the same and what else are they doing well they are also selling their commodities the oil using the petro yuan uh, and they will be selling that just like the United States uses the petro dollar to sell the oil and we can see they are making a run up and this is why you're seeing more and more threats um, that the US is making towards China. This is why we're having the pivot to Asia. This is why the United States is encircling China. This is why you see reports coming in that China is uh, cyber attacking our financial institutions, our banking, our stock market, the government uh, um, sites. This is why you are hearing this because they are slowly but surely setting up the yuan to become the reserve currency of the world. The central bankers of the United States are fighting back by making threats, by setting it all military assets up across the globe to take action when the time comes. And this is what we're seeing right now. Now, Obama was hoping, and the White House was hoping, and the central bankers were hoping that this Obamacare was going to be a great answer to their problems, and it was not, because they were hoping to bring in, I think the estimate was about $200 billion a year from uh, Obamacare with taxes and um, getting a cut from the insurance companies and, um, you know, to fund all this debt and everything. And right now it is a complete disaster and Obama had no choice uh, to relax the rules of the federal health care law for millions of consumers who, whose individual insurance policies have been canceled, saying they can buy bare bone plans now. Of course, they got their great plans uh, canceled. Now they can buy crappy plans uh, or entirely avoid uh, the requirement that most Americans have health coverage. So now the people have canceled health insurance, they can buy crappy insurance, and now they can either have no insurance whatsoever. And especially for those people who have cancer or other illnesses, this is a really terrible situation the government has put these people into. But again, they don't care about people's health. They don't care what they're doing. They know what is happening. They understand the collapse is coming. They are in it to get the money. That is it. Now, while everyone was looking at Duck Dynasty and paying attention to the issues of what was going on there, the Senate passed the NDAA for fiscal 2014 in a sweeping bill now being sent to the president, which reports, uh, of course, he's going to sign this. Um, and the bill is infamous for its language on in indefinite detention and the disappearing of American citizens because, again, this allows people, if you are suspected of being a, a terrorist, domestic terrorist, they do not need proof, you do not get due process, you get absolutely nothing, they can throw you in prison for one year, no questions asked, bye-bye. That is it. They can just pick you up on a suspicion and they need absolutely, get this straight, no proof. Very scary. And this is what Panda is all about, about fighting this law, which is completely um, null and void according to the Constitution. And again, this bill was, was passed via a fast tracking while most of us were being prop, um, told and put into our face news about Duck Dynasty. And this is what they always do. They always push things in front of us to distract you from what is really going on. Now, there is a report out there saying the Boston Police Department, and this they're saying is going to spread to many other police departments. And we have to remember that the DHS is now federalizing all local authorities, and they want to bring them under the umbrella of DHS. And DHS actually wants to control all local um, police departments um, because they are building up 
their civilian army um, that has nothing to do with the military and this is what they're doing now. So right now the Boston PD are distributing AR-15 assault rifles to patrol cars for reinforcement of the police and giving it more power against the street criminals. And the department um, you know, surprised the citizens purchasing about 30 military style semiotic rifles and training nearly 100 patrol officers to use them. And their excuse for this is the city and the world we live in now is different than in the years past and we need to have equipment to meet the threat that we're facing now because of terrorists and other threats um, like the Boston bombing. But I have to say again, what terrorist so far has used any gun? They haven't. Have you seen any terrorists come in here with their army of people shooting up people? No, most of the time they use bombs. Most of the time they use uh, other type of uh, you know planes or things like that. And of course, we all know these are false flag events. But but we never see an army of terrorists walking down the street with you know AK-47s or any other type of weapons shooting up everything. We don't see this at all. But the police need the AR-15s. At the same time, they they want to take this weapon away from every single other person. Do you see a pattern forming here? This is going to spread to other t police departments, just like other police departments are receiving these tank uh, uh, vehicles um, for terrorism. They are prepping, they are preparing, they've been doing this for years, and we're going to see this move forward um, at lightning speed. Now, the Italian president warns of violent unrest in 2014. Well, <laughs> uh, you have to have your head in the dirt not to realize what's going on here. Just think about this for a second. In Europe, we have masses, massive amount of debt. Greece, double-digit employment. Cyprus, double-digit. France, Spain, Portugal, Italy. All these countries having major, major problems. People are finally going to get fed up because when you drive people into poverty and they have nothing else to lose and they're heating their homes with firewood because they don't have enough money to pay for their f electric or fuel bill, they have nothing to lose. And if you look back in history, it, it happens the same way time after time. This is how revolutions, this is how people rise up and push the government back. And uh, the president has warned that Italy faces violent civil unrest in 2014 as the anti-EU demonstrations intensify in response to the country's worsening economy and total loss of faith in the state. The crisis affecting the Eurozone has put a strain on social cohesion. Italian youth employment is over 40% as the country remains embroiled in a deep recession, while the overall jobless figures hit a record high of 12.5% at the end of October. A staggering 134 retail outlets in Italy are closed every day, and business failures are up 10% since last year alone. And we see this not just in Italy, we see it in every single country. And we see what is happening. I can see here in the United States, I drive around, I see plazas closed. I see stores, it's all vacant. There's nothing there. I see back in February, and I mentioned this many times, USA Today showed Barnes & Noble, Best Buy, um, uh, GameStop, uh, uh, JCPenney, Sears, Kmart, all these stores closing thousands and thousands of stores, laying off retail people. Why? because the economy is not getting better. If they are trying to convince us that the unemployment rate is coming down and the economy is improving, we should see real estate booming where people are taking out mortgages because they have jobs. We should see retail sales skyrocketing. We shouldn't see people saying, no, well, I'm going to spend less because I don't have enough money. We should see things improving compared to a year ago. A year ago, we were close to what? 7.88%? .8 well, now we're down to 7%. Shouldn't things be getting better? Now, North Korea is threatening again to strike the South. 
And the warning comes after South Korea held a rally to denounce the North the North's uh, human rights record. North Korea has threatened to strike South Korea without notice in response to an anti uh, president rally early this week and we can see that this is all complete propaganda uh, the the US the central bankers the South Korea which is part of all this are building the propaganda and provoking every single country they're going to provoke North Korea they're going to prevent provoke Russia they're going to provoke China they're going to provoke uh, Syria Iran every single country because they need the war to get started and they rather provoke just like they've done in every other war, provoke, 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 until the other country makes a move. Now we have to go to war, and this is normally how this goes about. Now, there are many major problems in Iran right now. Uh, the Revolutionary Guards, um, their role is the defenders of the Islamic Revolution, and they have denounced the new president's breakthrough phone call with Barack Obama. Um, the, they're denouncing the dealings with the White House, Rohini, in turn, is seeking to ease them out of politics and the economy. He's curbing the, the guards' role in, in, in uh, industries from road building to petrochemicals and cutting the budget of their military force. And the guards right now report directly to the Ayatollah. And um, what, they, what the Ayatollah wants from them is they want to to be involved in politics and involved in what goes on and Rohini is cutting their military aid cutting what they're involved in so we're seeing a bit of a struggle right now in Iran and this goes on to say that the guards are pushing back in the political arena the, the commander uh, Major General Mohammad Ali Jafari said Rohini erred in speaking to Obama by phone during this September and what they're saying is they're warning Rohini and Rohini could be in the back pocket of the central bankers I mean it's really starting to look this way and Jafari has warned Rohini to expect resistance saying the guards cannot sit quietly in the face of developments they oppose and Jafari is saying I expect escalation of the conflict and uh, you know and he's not capable of predicting what this outcome is going to be and we can see that one or two things are happening here is the central bankers infiltrated Rohini US government and they're trying to make their move into the central bankers if that doesn't work it looks like they're trying to create some type of civil disturbance within the country and break it down so they can move in we this illusion of this deal is just that an illusion we are going to see this completely break down and there will be some type of strike in Iran something is going to happen there will be a false flag event we are heading down the path because their goal the central bankers goal has not changed it hasn't for 30 years you think all of a sudden after 30 years they're like yeah you know what it's not a big deal anymore no it hasn't changed their goal for Syria has not changed one bit they want the government to be removed they want the US dollar uh, being put back into the country to sell their natural resources using it and they want a private Western Central Bank inside that country and right now Saudi Arabia I reported before said they will go it alone without the United States to take on Syria and right now Saudi Arabia has done a very strange thing they've um, requested thousands of US anti-tank guided missiles in a move that could help the Syrian rebels and they purchased the 15,000 tube launched um, optically tracked wired guided missiles um, and this could bolster the uh, the revolt um, in Syria against Assad and the 1 billion Saudi order does not appear to be linked to the kingdom's military requirements and we can see how they are pushing this and I wouldn't be surprised surprised if some of this or all of it ended up with the rebels and they again the goal has not changed the way they are approaching it has 
Now, as we know, and I've talked about cyber attacks a lot, cyber attacks now are on the rise. The cyber threat is getting worse. We saw Target was hit um, and 40 million customers account records were stolen from retail giant Target and the regulator of the nation's largest financial institutions warned that customers' financial information is increasingly, increasingly under assault in their banks as well. And um, the report found that one new tactic employed by hackers is to target a bank's homepage with a so-called denial of service attack in which thousands of hacked computers tried to log on to the web uh, to the website simultaneously thereby disabling it for regular customer use while security experts are distracted by the DOS uh, the DOS attack the report found the hackers go after the real target uh, for instance draining customers accounts through fraudulent wire transfers and this is a buildup and this news continually comes out because they want the American public uh, and the public around the world to realize that we are under a huge threat of a cyber attack and we have to remember what Janet Napolitano said she said it is not if but when and they are building this up they haven't stopped for over two and a half years now they told us there will be an attack on the power on the uh, power grid, the infrastructure, water, natural gas, on the financial institution. We understand there's a NeverQuest malware. And again, this is all being set up for the false flag events. And this is what we're going to see because we need to understand that the central bankers, the U.S. government, is very worried. They're worried about the collapse. They're worried about the dollar imploding. They're worrying about being blamed about what is going on. They understand that the Fed cannot stop this QE, even though they are telling us they're going to. Remember, in my other reports and everything they say, it's always the opposite. So we're definitely going to see an increase of QE. There will be an event. Something will definitely happen to make them um, pl place the blame on another country. It will allow the Fed to increase QE and it will uh, allow the country to be put under martial law. I mean, it's, it's just like a, a perfect storm coming together at this point. And we can see, and I mentioned this in my uh, previous report, 243, that they are all this has all been planned out. This has all been ready, and they are on the track of doing this. They were on the track of doing this back in August going into September um, with the Syrian event, and this is why tapering was uh, being pushed and pushed and pushed until the Syrian event fell apart. Now they understand what they need to do. They understand the people of the U.S. Congress are uh, will not vote for war. If it, it if there is a false flag event in another country, they, they get it. They understand, well, we have to take it to the next level. We need to have something here on U.S. soil. We understand that the economy is going to be collapsing. And it's going to be terrible because when this market comes down and the Treasury bond market comes down, people are going to be out of work. People are going to be starving. Um, we're going to have these events occur. Uh, it could be chemical, it could be nuclear, definitely a cyber attack. Banks will be frozen. They'll be on bank holidays. You'll not be able to get your money out. Um, money will be siphoned out of these banks. There will be bail-ins. Uh, they will be taking not 8, not 10, but not 15, probably 50% of what is in the accounts. Um, the FDIC has no way of... of um, protecting everyone's account. They do not have enough at all, and they are going to blame this on another country. There is no way around this at this time. It is a perfect opportunity for the president to enact the executive orders, um, declaring martial law, which suspends the Constitution, and um, because they will be riots in the street. Again, if you look at the big cities, they have been disarming the people in the big cities, and this is why they have the draconian uh, gun laws being in, uh, put into place, and we can see where this is all headed. Listen, everyone. I want to thank everyone for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.